All right, so hopefully this will help explain things a little bit. Uh, firstly, I'm actually going to just do something because this bugs me, how the textures look, and hopefully this window will show. Nope, it's not. That's phenomenal. I'm just turning off MIP maps in user preferences under system. Gives everything that pixely look again instead of being blurred together, which I detest when you're supposed to be doing pixel art. Um, so basically what I've got going here is... Uh, and this file is in the Git repository. Uh, we have the open chest, and I just did a closed chest that didn't even touch anything other than putting textures on it, just so I could compare and get the front sides to match. A Z key lets you toggle between these to go from textured to solid to wireframe. None of that do we really care about right at this moment. Um, I'm actually going to go to material. Oh, I guess I won't go to materials. I wanted to see the individual colors here. What would that be under? Oh, solid. There we are. I was just looking at that too. Okay, so what, we, what I did is... Let me actually demonstrate it on the closed chest. So I basically added three materials to the mesh. And then on the top, I used the top texture. And the first one you do is going to apply to everything because it's the only material. So we'll actually go to the second one. And we're going to do the sides, which the three sides all share the same. So we'll go to this next material slot. And I already created sides from the first one here. So we'll do that. Three are highlighted, so they're selected. But we're not seeing anything change. You have to click the Assign button. And then that lets Blender know to use that material on those faces. And then we're going to go to the last material slot here and pick the front and Assign. And then just go back to Edit Mode. So we have... That's basically how you set the colors up. You need to do this so when you export the file as an OBJ, mine test knows that it's different materials for all those UV maps. And then you just put them in the same order in the code on mine test that you used here. So you do top side front. And then to do the individual UV mapping, actually, let me jump over to the UV editing screen. I don't know why I'm. What? I don't want a system window, I want a 3D view. I don't know how I had that messed up. Uh, to do the unwrapping, it's actually really easy. Easier than I had even anticipated it being. This is probably going to mess up what I already have unwrapped. So it's going to ruin it, but I just won't save the file. You just select the two faces. So I know on the post you had mentioned you wanted to know how to do it for doors. Doors would be a little bit different because you don't have an opening here. But here you see I have the lower half of the chest. And then this is the upper half. Uh, so basically you just select those two pieces because they should be connected when the chest is closed. U to unwrap, it unwraps it, um, and it pops in here. Now you'll notice that the faces are upside down. So what you do is just select down here on the bottom. You have um, options to select how you're going to select your mesh or your uh, UV. So you can do individual vertices on it. You can do the edges, or you can do the entire face. Because all we're doing is rotating it. We're just going to do the entire face, and then we'll rotate that around. And you'll notice on the top of the chest. The brown goes on the bottom instead of the top. So we're just going to rotate that again. Uh, the control key will con constrain your motions. So that's how you do that. Um, also, what I do is under UVs, uh, you have an option here to constrain to image bounds. If you have that unchecked, you can put your UV map anywhere, which, as you notice over here, can lead to some kind of weird effects going on. But if you turn this on, then you are stuck staying inside of that pixel space of that image, which generally speaking, you want to do unless you're doing something with a repeating texture. Uh, on the sides here, um, again, it's the same thing. You just select both. I think this one's going to mess up when I unwrap it. Yeah, it goes weird. I don't know why, but it did. So all you have to do is rotate it, reposition it, change to an edge select, throw that there. Switch this back to a face select and rotate that. Edge select again, move that up to match to whatever point. And of course, for any mesh you're doing, you, whatever you do it different because you have different things going on there. And just move that in place. Arrow keys will actually move your cursor in Blender so you can move it in certain directions and then this one just has to be rotated around you could also hit the R key on the keyboard and then type in say 90 or you could do 180 if you have to flip it uh, it supports 
all of that, which is really neat, but it's a lot of kind of power user stuff. That's probably going to be a little over your head. For the insides of the chest, I did the same thing, just selected the two, unwrapped. It went all the way out, which I didn't want. So I just scaled this at 0.9, which S key to scale, and then 0.9 to reduce it. And that just gives that little bit of a black outline. Um, with this inside one, I actually used the top image, so we didn't get that central seam. And that's what I did on all the sides as well. Um, so yes, if you are doing multiple textures, sorry, for example, here we have, this is the front image and this is the side image to switch between those, say for whatever reason, we wanted the top to have the front image. We just select that face. Then over here in our UV editor on the bottom here, we just change what image it's using. So it'll do say front. Now we see the front that will not affect your exported file at all. For example, I can select all of this and change it all to be, okay, never mind, because that picture is not loaded, so I can't use that. But I could change it so every single texture is the same. Blender is not going to care when it exports, because it's all being stored as individual faces because of, or uh, individual materials, because of these three materials here. So when you set this up, you can use any textures you want. It doesn't matter as long as the ratio stays the same. With that being said, you can also use a higher resolution image. Like this is 16 by 16, I think. I could be using like a 512 by 512 image and it doesn't matter. As long as the ratio stays the same, I can change the size of the image when I export it and everything and it's being used in my test and it won't matter. So to really quickly just do a door here for you, we're gonna go ahead and add a cube. A default cube in mine or in Blender is one or actually I think it's two by two by two. Uh, so if we just scale that by 0.5, it becomes a one by one by one cube. And that is the size of a node in my test. So I'm going to go ahead and move that over um, because we're doing a door. Let's just go ahead and control alt Q to toggle quad view. I don't know how much of Blender, you know, so I'm just throwing tons of stuff out there. We're going to make this one node taller, A to select or deselect and then select everything. Move that up so it's at no wait. Yeah, move it up so it's at the. Leave it there. I think you leave it there. Yeah, you do because that's where those are. Yeah, uh, you have to be a half uh, node or half uh, Blender unit down for your nodes to line up in world, in my test world, and then we just select these two faces. Hmm. I guess those two will work. Whatever it doesn't matter. And we just scoot them in, and that did not work right. Control key again to move on the grid. And we'll just say that's the thickness we want to use for the door. Let me jump back into UV editing, edit mode. So we have, let's say the front and the back faces are both going to be the same. We can unwrap those. This splits in half. So what we could then do is slip the two on top of each other and they're actually opposites now. So we have to select one of these and just rotate it around. And now they're both the same. And then to do the edges, you just select all your edges, unwrap those, and you'll see, whoa, that looks crazy insane what happened. Well, that's because it keeps connected edges connected. So you have two ways. You can unwrap each piece individually, which honestly for a door, not really gonna kill you to do. And it's kind of the easiest way to do it for something simple like that. And then you just have to tweak all this stuff, but it does introduce a problem in that this is the top of the door and this is the side of the door and the top of the door is twice as big. Now, because it's something simple like this, we can just scale to 0.5 and issue resolved. I don't know why it connected to that. It shouldn't have. One. Did I miss a face on this? I think I did. Unwrap. Unwrap. You can also do each individually. So I could scale them all as single. Well, the top and the bottom actually, the only two have to be scaled. Okay, there we go. And now we have 
a top and a top. Let me go ahead and rotate this one 90 and just chuck it up there. And then we have one side and the other side. And if you wanted to layer them, you just pop them right on top of each other. And then you would just use one material that you would create to do all the sides on the door. So hopefully that explains everything you ever needed to know about Blender and more. Um, and if not, feel free to reach out and ask more questions. And then to export, you would just do export OBJ, select all your good stuff, fill out all your good stuff there. But I'm sure you know how to do that because you already did that once. So yeah, quick intro. Any more questions, drop me a line and I'll be more than happy to answer them. And good luck.